Uh, red five standing by. Black, 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 actually, it's it's black five standing by because I'm, you know, wait, no, that doesn't make look... sense. The X wings weren't even red; they were like gray. Uh, it was like gray five well, standing they, by. Well, the, they were designated by team that were colors, so it was like red was the color, but the actual X wing is gray, but it had red stripes. I mean, I don't know. Right, man. and then the, the Y wings were like yellow, weren't they? Yellow, yellow. They were yellow in color, but I thought they were blue. On the, I don't know. Were they remember. blue it's, designations? It's been man. a minute since I've seen Star Wars, if I'm going to be All honest. right, well, Red 5 standing by, because, you know, it's I got it's the red windows. I was going to say, you weren't you weren't going to be Black 5, because you don't look very British. So, anyway, uh, yeah, go ahead, standing by. What's up? Uh, I've ramped my gen up to max. Max gen power. We've <laughs> Dude, got the, I've got my gen light. all the way up, too. The lights are on. I think it's time to highball. I'm, I'm at, I might actually just let you drag me along here. For, oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, you're invisible on my end. There's just a scary floating conductor back okay, there. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you're just dragging me along. Uh, so today we, we're, we're back pretty much where we left off. We're at the coal mine. Um, we're going to go down and basically stock up the coal mine a little bit more. We want to put as much coal in here as possible just because then we can, you know, have that fuel source for all the new coal engines we have. So we did stock it up a little bit last time. We've got some rails down at the smelters. So we're going to go down to the smelter, down the 10%. Hopefully that works. Spicy. And yeah, and then we're going to, uh, when we get to the smelter, we're going to cut the train, load up half of it with rails, take the other half, load it up with beams, bring it all back, get more coal. Pretty, you know, logistical run today. Just kind of getting that fuel supply up, and then we'll have to, at some point in time, put a coaling tower next to our round table, roundhouse, Knights of the Round Table area, and, uh, you know, it's get that stocked bottom. up as well. Pretty yeah. much just created a whole new industry by needing coal fuel. We, Although, to be honest, we've never really supplied any of the wood cutting places with wood fuel yet, although the one at our round table is getting low, so we might have to supply that at some point. Maybe we'll have to do an episode where we just do fuel runs and supply all the fuel... Right needs and and somebody did uh somebody did do the math apparently and the amount of coal and the uh the tweetsies tender it's apparently six thousand coal units and six thousand yeah and apparently you could uh you you don't actually have to refill the tender for something like almost a thousand hours of gameplay i think is what somebody said so uh, we're continuing on that trend of we don't really need to de deal anything with these facilities, Bro, but it's 6, fine. Bro, 6,000 coal. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a big tender. But, like, the, the coaling tower, I thought it only held, like, 200 or something. So you wouldn't even... Oh, I don't I don't know if it's, like, units like that, because those are in uh, oh, tons I, or something. Oh, right, right, but, right. But fire, the... fire units are different than mass units or something. So right, right, okay, maybe okay. I was about to say, like... If that was 6,000, can you imagine we would never, like, we'd never need coal. Right. Like, we'd never be able to fill it. I'm thinking, my guess is, that it's 6,000 kilograms of coal. Right. Maybe. Which would be, well, we, like... See, we some. have, like, a fuel supply depot at the smelter for wood. Um, and I guess that's because we have the Class 48 living at the smelter, so it needs a fuel supply without coming all the way back to the main right. maintenance shed. Um, we've got, do we have a fuel supply here at the coal mine? I think we do too, right? We have another we one here. Well, yeah, it's the most remote location theoretically on the railroad, so. Right, and we don't need a coal supply there because it can supply its own coal. It is the coal supply, yes. And I guess we don't really need a coal supply at the smelter because all the engines that are coal burning that go to the smelter are just going to be there temporarily and leave, so that, that'll be fine. Yeah, I think we'll be good. We'll have to supply all the wood. It's, and then, is that it for a wood supply? Just one at the main, one at the smelter and one here, right? Three of them? I think that's right. I think that's all we've built, yeah. I, I okay. don't think there's any other ones. Yeah, we'll have to do an episode where we just bring a couple supply cars of wood to things. those places. Get the, yeah. get the logistics of the railroad done, because, I mean, that's definitely a thing that the railroad had to deal with. Uh, you know, you gotta move your bring own Bring a fuel. coal car and just... Yeah. Stock How would you okay? So if you have you have I know we've talked about it a little bit before, but you have a coaling tower, right? Like the towers they've got here. Would they just have like literally like how this one has it, an elevator that lifts the coal up to the top of the tower, and it just that's a fancy it. thing for a bigger railroad location. Most of the locations like this and railroads online, which are pretty small, um, all they would have would be a dock where you pay a bunch of dudes with shovels to shovel from the car to the dock, and then from the dock to a tender. So wow. very manual labor, very intensive, like, but that's so, all it would So have been. if you're a coal dock operator, you're just like, what, 
sitting there all day until someone comes along and says, hey man, I need coal for my choo-choo? Like, you is would, that- You would be some sort of other B&B, &B, bridge and building employee, probably on the oh, railroad. Okay, gotcha. So you'd have other tasks, but one of your tasks would be to deal with the coal, the locomotives, because they, they really did try and make those jobs make sense. Like, there was a job back in the day where one of the responsibilities was you owned the water towers in a certain region. And so right. you'd have, like, it would be a dude on a bicycle back in the early days, or, uh, you know, later had a hand car or speeder or something. And he would go down the railroad are to- you, Are you on full break right I, now? I'm on just... mostly full break because I'm trying not to put flat spots on. I'm I would seeing go... how much break I can have. Oh, I, I would go full break. We are getting spicy fast back here. Uh, I'm at 98% break because I don't know. I mean, I guess we could try. I'm going to go full break. I'm on full break. All right, and I'm God, gonna, that looks I'm wrong. Tag, tag some extra cars back here. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, yeah. Fun fact, uh, if you start sliding wheels, you have much less braking power. Man, it is day. impossible to get out of the front of the Climax. I just fell off the train, so good luck. Okay. Your back car well, is tied. The Climax is 100% tied, but I can't. All right, like, I am now working against brakes in reverse. And no, it, it, seems looks, it actually looks It looks like we're slowing helpful. down. You're, you're onto the lower grade section there. We should be okay. Yeah, you, I'm trying to climb through the front of the Climax uh, cab, basically, to get onto the car, and it keeps yeeting me backwards into the... Right. Anyway, at least I got one car tied, and the Climax is fully tied. It's so fine. We'll be, yeah. We'll be good. Yeah. But, like, I definitely I definitely died there. That was the day it, that... It, it happens. People You die guys on got the down to the bottom of the railroad, uh, and you realized you were missing a brake man or two, and that it, was It just... happens. That's the thing that happens. I mean, you And know, then you just change the ideal, schedule but... and be like, oh, no, he wasn't on shift today. I don't know what happened. It was it's just, fine. you know... It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. 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 No, it was terrible. uh It was a gig on the railroad. Like, people had to go take care of all those different facilities. So, like, one guy, you'd own the three water towers, you know, out of town or whatever. And so you'd right. go and you'd have to go fire up the stationary steam engine that was the pump to bring the water to the tower when it was needed, whatever. And and then you'd help the crews service their engine or whatever. And that was your responsibility. So one of your responsibilities might be you're also the coal guy. So when you hear the whistle, you know, okay, time to go to work. You know, go get the coal and go <laughs> shovel into the tent. Like literally you and maybe, maybe it's just you. Wouldn't that take but... like, you know, like, good 30 40 minutes to fill oh, a tender oh of god cool? shovel by shovel dude it takes like 30 minutes to fill 491's tender with our backhoe oh god <laughs> like it would just be a nightmare if you had to like completely fill a tender by yourself with a shovel that's that's not fun but i mean that's new video idea for heist of the railroad museum i completely filled a tender with nothing but a shovel one of those toy like kitty plastic shovels you that know you sounds, get at walmart that sounds like way too much effort yeah, and I'm then just, just time lapse the whole thing, and then you know people will watch you shovel with like this tiny plastic shovel for seven hours. <laughs> no <Be> thanks. Great. <laughs> sure. What, heist, I'm what's just your, full of all the great ideas. What's your workout routine? Well, yeah. it's a it's a little strange, and it involves getting black lung in the process. It's fine. So okay, so I actually noticed something interesting. I was watching uh, a documentary on coal mining just because. Uh, you know that's where things i ended that, up things for that some are interesting reason. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I, I ended up on a, a coal mining and and with modern coal mining it seems like they spray water onto the coal like as they're mining it to keep the dust down right which makes a lot of sense but like in a, in an engine with a tender do you guys do that at all do you like i mean your coal pile is obviously outside so it gets rained on right but like right. Do you guys actually water your tenders at all to keep the dust down or do you not care so, does it matter there's a couple little things to unpack with this for, for, like, while you're going around the railroad, we don't really tend to, although some firemen prefer to have wet coal. Fun fact, this is a, a weird thing. Yeah, yeah, we, we talked about that. The right. steam explosions breaking coal apart. Yes, precisely. So some folks like yeah. to do that because it makes their coal fire, like, spread out a little bit more easily. But, you know, if it's super wet, it's kind of ridiculous. But you, you don't really need to actually wet down the whole tender for the sake of dust i mean you're, you're usually going forward and the dust gets carried back and you know your passengers get it instead so so but, your passengers just get black lung, but, but you not know they're you, they're so. they're in a they're in an enclosed they're passenger paying car customers and to get, it's 1905 paying for the black lung. Yeah. it's 1905 and we die like men so anyway it's it's fair yeah the, the amount of dust that the the tender pile actually makes is not really that much when you're loading it it does generate a lot of dust but we don't wet the coal down for that one the one thing that we do end up wetting the coal down with sometimes is if the tender is full of a lot of fines a lot of fine coal really small pieces of coal 
um, we will wash the coal under the water tower and we'll actually wash out the tender and try and get all of the, the small pieces out and keep all the big lumps. So you put the two shovels uh, up Wait, against so like the you're saying when door. the tender's empty, you'll wash no, it out? No, when the tender is still full with like a bunch of coal in it, we'll, you'll block the exit so that only water and small pieces of coal can get out. And then you'll like just douse the coal in water to try and get the uh, all the small bits out because you know. What do you do with, with all that excess coal? Just dump it on the it ground. Just goes and... on the ground and becomes ballast. You seen oh. the ballast that the railroads used? <laughs> it's all like it's all like full of coal dust and everything else. Like it's a lot of narrow gauge railroads used pretty much like exclusively cinders and ash. Um, for the the smaller railroads are the ones that had less money, um, and. and locations that didn't really need really robust ballast that was pretty right. common but a lot of places on the railroad had like pretty crazy engineered ballast to them too uh, there's actually a neat thing with the denver and grand western where there was a time later in the railroad's history where the highway department came along and wanted to run a highway uh, and needed to relocate the railroad in order to make the highway and the railroad said well we're not going to do it unless you take care of the track for us so the highway guys came, took the track out, put their highway in, and realigned the track for them. And it was the nicest track on all the railroad because someone who dealt with cars and roadways made it perfectly smooth and level. <laughs> perfectly ballasted. But the uh, the less fortunate roads, definitely ash, coal, cinders, whatever, you know, whatever fell off the side. There you go. So... I guess this is, uh, you know, it's funny. Every time I ask you questions, people are always like, I swear to God, if Heist answers with, it depends, it depends. one more time. Yeah, there, there's your, uh, there's then, your drinking Then I'll get, one. but so, like, realistically, your ballast is obviously going to be based on where you have the railroad. Like, if you have a railroad in the middle of a desert somewhere that's susceptible to windstorms, there's a high probability your ballast is going to blow away over time. And you'll just have to come back and like get it again and all that um i'm just gonna leave you know what i'm just gonna leave the helper on the main because we're gonna be coming right back here sure that sounds good it's gonna go back up in reverse because that's just that's just how it is but you know we'll that's, flip that's around life. again if the iron might fine but yeah like if you have like if you have a ballast realistically um if you build a ballast perfectly for weather conditions it'll still wear away over time with wind rain whatever right like you'll have to eventually come back and you always have to come back and things vibrate things get knocked out loose like th this is right. why maintenance away is a thing you bring guys in and you retamp the ballast because you need to hard pack like the whole purpose behind real ballast is to hard pack the jagged points of the ballast you don't want smooth rock you want jaggedy pointy rock so like river rock makes for awful ballast uh and explains why a lot of alignments that ran along rivers see the durango and silverton for a long time uh had really bad track was because they used what they had and river rock doesn't hold because it's smooth and has eroded so you're, you're trying to jam these angular pieces of rock together underneath the ties and around the ties underneath the rail specifically you don't want a huge pile of ballast under the center of the tie because then when the train goes over it tries to break the tie in half so you really need a dense packed pile under the one rail the other rail little bit lighter in the center still pretty much touching but not as densely packed um and so as trains go over as the rail shifts i mean a as a train goes down the track it's actually pushing the rail out ahead of it like it's a, a piece of bread dough and it's a bread roller but you're talking about a giant roller that is a locomotive and a very stiff thing that's not dough. But that's actually what the train does is it's pushing that rail out ahead of it. So if you have trains going the same direction on the same piece of track over and over and over like a circle, it'll actually push the rail down the alignment. And so as that does, the ballast moves, it washes away, it gets blown by wind, whatever it is. Do you guys, uh, and you have to take you guys have a again. measurable, like a measurable difference in that? Like, will your your switches and stuff will slowly shift position? Oh god, like, yes. So your whole we, circle just spins. Eventually, the museum had, has it where the circle is not lined up anymore. We, like, we had some issue. I can't remember what it was because um, it was right before I started full time at the museum again. But they were only able to run clockwise all summer for summer ops. And then they had run Polar Express clockwise and like oh, most of the, the operations had been clockwise the past year. And so uh, when we were doing the track work, the anchors that are supposed to be up against the ties had moved an inch and a half. So all of the rail on the entire railroad had shifted clockwise almost an inch and a half. And it's like, 
that's ridiculous. Like we're a museum. Like why is it like this? And and our track foreman, who I'm, a lot of the things I'm just telling you about come from uh, one of our track volunteers, who's a genius, who's worked with the BNSF for years. He's a really sweet guy. Um, but uh, he, he talks about well, you know, okay, so you know, some locations on the railroad see 50 trains a day, pretty busy, even traffic, but. This is the only railroad in the world where the same piece of track sees 50 trains a day over and over and over and over again in the same direction. And it's like, right. So just oh, every every yeah. other day, drive the other way. You know. Yeah. It's so here's where that doesn't work. So we have train cars that are from like 1881 and they're old and they didn't get reinforced by the railroad. So you can't have them as the lead car in the train. So if you want to run the other direction the next day, you have to spin the train, rebuild the train so it's facing the right way. And that's a lot of work. And All right, hear me out. Build one of those star patterned Ys, right? You know, the one that you've shown me before, the star pattern Y. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You got to let me get ahead of you on the track. Why? Because logistics. You can shove in. There's, we'll, we'll oh, cut, I don't we'll want to shove in. We'll though. cut the shoving. last seven cars off, and then oh, you can just shove in, sucks. and then you pull it back out. Then you don't have to run around the train, bro. Oh, but that's not so bad. Okay. No, it's not. Cut the last seven Fuck. cars off, and then I'm gonna keep going. I can't count. Okay. Hi. I don't want to do the one, degree? two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I think this is it. Okay. Bye. Have a beautiful time. You want beams, yes? Right. That's what we need. Yeah, beams. Yeah. All right. I promise beams. to not derail while I'm away. Bye. Uh, I doubt that. Good luck. Puts it at 100. 100. The question oh, is. Oh, of course, okay. That. Well, that was. That was. Did yeah. you just derail? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> that didn't, didn't take didn't long. Didn't even make. Didn't even make it. <laughs> didn't out even of sight. make it out of sight. Just. That's uh, yeah. It's, already, it's, it's gone already well. derailed Man, it. Unbelievable. The, 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 Unbelievable. The, the inner machinations of these physics right now. Um, I've got yeah, no, I mean, four cars physics. in the dirt the, and the and the and the engine. The engine is now facing the wrong direction. Um, Ice is not allowed to drive trains anymore. <laughs> it's a good thing we don't drive trains. We run them. So you know. That's true. Yeah. No. Okay. That. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Ice is not allowed to do the thing. My okay. God! So, can't so put it. this thing back on real quick. So what you're saying is I can't push back because there's a train in the way. Uh, I am. I refuse to answer questions I without my lawyer almost, present. Almost, almost entirely clear. You could saw by. You'll be fine. Just, just One, shove. One, two, three, just come four, on. five. I lined six, you into the yard. You're fine. It's, uh, it's fine. Don't even worry about it. Do we even know what the tonnage math is on this? Are we going to be able to make it back up? Uh, uh, it's not, a half not percent? done the math. No. And why did this locomotive just derail again? I just, I re-railed it and it's just fallen off the track. Although actually it's only six and a half percent. We'll be fine. Oh, because the re-rail, re-rail tool, please. Oh my please? God. Look at this. Look Friends, at this nonsense. Free re-rail tool, please. Oh, okay. Dunk. Bro, what the heck? It was, did you it's fine. Do? It was it it the first car did a kickflip because I was going twenty two point one miles an hour. Um, yeah, well, you and, literally you said know, you weren't gonna die, and then while like, I was this gone, happened. and I didn't get gone, so I still uh, my promise. Not, I kept not, my promise. Oh I didn't my leave God. yet. You still saw me. I kept my promise. I, I'm an honest man. Okay. No, no this is. Why does this pin work? Terrible. There we go. That's fine. Okay. Let me get this out of the way here. Oh my god, jeez. I was curious because I didn't really know how fast it went, and I wanted to know if it went spicy fast, and I learned. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, no, it does go. It does, it does. You know how you can tell it goes spicy fast when you're when you're sitting there and listening to it and you hear the <laughs> and you're like, hmm, doesn't sound like those cylinders are chuffing anymore, but more like a constant flow of steam. Yeah, but it's just like a looped audio sound that's just repeating over and over and over again. So it's just like, you, you don't hear the constant. Oh, you like, re-reeled that just like a, okay. It's like a thing. It's fine. It's fine. Terrible, terrible heist. Terrible. I, I don't know what you're on about. Who's the only you're messing with in this flow. Here? We were we were doing so good there. We made it down the ten percent with we no did. derailing. It's fine. It's fine. We you made know, it. You know, sometimes every, like sometimes yeah. you just need to pee in a cup. Okay. No, I had, I, I had I, to go, man. I wasn't gonna make it all the way to the sawmill. Oh my god, unbelievable. <laughs>
All right, you got to push back first, yep. and then and then you got to go forward, and then back, and then right, we'll, right, we'll right. It all. Shoving back, and my bell is dinging for reasons. You don't need the extra tractive effort, sir. Uh, it it started on its own. It's uh, it's ringing its own bell, and they do do that sometimes, which is funny. But all right, one, dunk, dunk, two, dunk, 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 dunk. three. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, you can go forward, I think. Did you get the first one? Well, you didn't get me pinned in. Oh, well, I thought you were going to get yourself. I'm running the train. You're also the one who caused the issue, I don't sir. I what you're on about. I'm, pretty sure I'm like the, like, you know, I expect at least sure three, that's a you got to back up more. You're not, you're not, uh, you're not shoving into this. There we go. Go forward. I would expect at least three bottles of whiskey uh, for my assistance in using my local we, crane we, and we not can, telling uh, management. We can uh, we can arrange that. Yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna, gonna literally come back to the yard and they're gonna be like, "Why are all the cars like only on three wheels on each truck?" And <laughs> well, like, why, I don't know what happened. Why, why do all the railroad ties look destroyed around this one yeah. curve? I don't know. What happened to that tree on the corner that's just cut in half? Well, why is know? there mud on everything? Yeah. I, Don't worry, you just gotta wait till it rains before you come back. That's all. That's and fine. Then, no one will know. No, no, no one, one will know. know. Yeah. No, these cars with these wood planks too. Like, there's no way they would have survived oh, that. Yeah, they would just been shredded. Like completely ruined. Yeah. That's no, good. It's good. I like, you know, I like doing things quickly and concisely. Well, I mean, I was doing it quickly right up until. You could have been at the sawmill by now if you had driven normal. Uh, not am stupid I pinned speed. in yet? Or no, you're still no, you gotta go back. back more. I, I, the car just rendered in. Okay. You're good. Just keep going I can back. only see so far. Tracks right, I can see forever. Got it. Okay. Get out of here. Go away. Don't die this time, please. No promises. Yeah, I I know. I'm well aware. <laughs> so uh, what were we talking about before? Um, I don't um, know. Something stuff? about you not binning it. I think is this. Oh, that's what, right. What... Well, hey, I was not gone. I so saw it was actually. Fine. My, well, speaking of bidding it, I saw your uh, BNSF railroad had a my, derail today. My, my alma mater, yes. Your and alma it, mater. I it, didn't see any was... the details of it, but yeah. So, like, my dad emailed me with with the link to the article on this one, and I was checking my email this morning. And, and there was like it. a big. They were complaining about six thousand gallons of diesel, and yeah, I was like, Christ! Had... And his dice well, has you know probably I had... like one engine worth of diesel, right? I well, I had like thirty, or I had like three hundred or four hundred gallons of crankcase oil. They had right. two, like, from what it looked like, it looked like the two Jeeps rolled over. Um, and I want to say the Jeeps had, like, 26 or 2,700 gallon fuel tanks. So, yeah, they, they actually dumped, like, 5,000 gallons of diesel fuel. Um, and they were right on the Puget Sound up in Anacortes. So, really unfortunate. We'll have to see what the, uh, the investigation shows and everything. But the, the early report was that they derailed right before a bridge. And then uh, fell off to the side and, and ended up in the mud. And I mean, the pictures were pretty bad. It was uh, it was one of my former turds, as I uh, refer to all of my BNSF Choo Choo children. Uh, the 2824, that was the lead engine that was on its side. Thankfully, no injuries from what I heard. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the locomotive rolled over and was like halfway buried in mud. And uh, I guess the fuel tanks got popped open and and uh, fuel drained out, which is always a bad time because I mean, it was right at the sound there and... and you know, fuel tanks on a diesel like are that, they so. like low on the diesel right above the they're like yeah, along the, the side of the center yeah, yeah 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 and that's just for center of mass reasons to keep it low or something or you know i've there's not really a, another good place to put a bunch of stuff on a, the locomotive but i mean that also right because all the top is like the actual engine and stuff and... right but yeah that was a that was a nasty one and it was like it was funny to me. Like I did get a chuckle out of seeing it was the twenty eight twenty four, and it was like that. That's a decent engine. I don't it's remember. It's like seeing your your child it. in the news later on in life, and you're like, like hey, hey, I I recognize that. Yeah, I know. I know you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I saw. I literally just saw the article because uh, someone had linked it to me, and I saw BNSF, and I was like, I know somebody who worked at BNSF. <laughs> yes, you do. And then I was like, oh no. It's funny. Um, I called them my turds, but I mean, obviously, I was just one of many supervisors at the shop. But you'd always see the same power at the shop, really, for us because we were we were like a zone shop, not a, a major system shop. And right. so we took care of all the locomotives that worked out in the Northwest. 
And so when, you, when you've got intermediate locomotives and high horsepower locomotives as your two categories, the high horsepower stuff was just putting through, heading to the next big town. The intermediate stuff worked out of Seattle, Pasco, Wenatchee, Spokane, um, all of those different places across the Pacific Northwest. And they all came for their major service to us. So it was like, okay, maybe we only saw it once a year. But you saw the same collective group of locomotives all the time. So um, me being like stupid and remembering all these road numbers, like I remember almost every single engine. Like, oh yeah, that was one of mine. So it was like, ah, yeah, it's, it's one of those. The road and, uh, number of an yeah. engine created at manufacturing never changes ever for the oh, life of the engine. Oh, good God. No, it, created by the railroad when they get it. Um, and changes as they see fit. Most of my BNSF oh, really? engines so were like, renumbered. You, yeah. you sell it, or you can even change it on your own. There's yeah. no like. Yeah, you just have. Is to it file like your car or... insurance though? Like it's registered to that number, or is it like a yes. license plate or anything? Yeah. Or? So locomotives have what's called a blue card, which is their registration okay. basically. And like it's so, like when we make our Fast and the Furious locomotive movie, but it's the pink slip. It's the blue. They're slip. racing yeah. for. Or racing for Re blue card. Racing for the blue card, man. Yeah, it's this right. big card that like tells all the details about the locomotive and its maintenance records and and history and and uh, sign offs basically to the FRA stating that this locomotive did all these things and has recently been maintained and they can check right. registration and status of everything. Yeah. Um, so first scene, yeah. he'll show up and be like, you know, five thousand dollars cash to enter this race. And be like, bro, blue card. I'm racing my blue card. Racing my, my blue card. There you go. On my, 240 Montezuma or whatever, you know, that's, that's my <laughs> well, wrong era. But I mean, yeah, we could do that. That could be fun. That could be. Fun. Yeah, yeah, I got it. We're, we're, we're going to make this movie, man. It's going to be a huge hit. I'm sell it to Netflix. so excited. It's going to be great. Yeah, it'll be great. I mean, you know what? The most recent Fast and Furious movie, like, you know, I, I know it's bad. And this I lost is, they're on brain to like number cells 10. after watching that. I watched right. it in theater. I lost. Brain I, cells. So I haven't watched any of them past like three because I feel like the series ended with the original with trilogy. Tokyo Drift. <laughs> yeah, and that and that was it. And after that, was, I was what's like, GK you know what? stand for Donkey Kong? Donkey yeah. Kong, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I, that, I, that's kind of where I ended. But I know the new Fast and Furious is bad because my fiance, who knows like nothing about cars, doesn't care for cars. She came up to me the other day and was like, so you know the new Fast and Furious movie? Apparently, it's so bad they go to space. And like, when my fiance is talking about a car movie, it's a bad movie, you know? Like, that's... Right. She would never watch it or like otherwise unless there was you know what i mean like it's just like that was the big red flag for me it was like oh no even she knows that it's like <laughs> we're watching wrong. this to make fun of it and that's it yeah yeah so like you know it, it for me i i always enjoyed the cars but they've gotten so far from it that yeah they they Par went down the, the ridiculous scale of we need to make everything more ridiculous for more views anyway kind of point thing. being yeah. train racing movie not that ridiculous. I feel like you know we've got it's we've got a, all the it's a plain all amount of ridiculous. Here. Yeah, we got all the things. Yeah, I still think you know you got to have. There's some plot lines we could have. For example, um, you know he's got the you know in the in the beginning of the first movie, um, the RX-7 has like the passenger seat that flips up to hide the NOS bottles, right? Right. So same thing. We'll just have one of the toolkits in the coal pile has like some secret special coal hidden in it, you know, and that like no one knows until <laughs> yes. like halfway the, through. The, the mysterious Back to the Future red log that makes it go yeah. 88 miles an hour. Yeah, that's exactly a thing. Uh -huh. right. Like there we go. You know, so we can have that right hidden in the engine. Someone's got an extra deep firebox that no one knows about. You know, it's just like super secret. Or it's got it's um like bigger. What are they? They're like the bigger louvers, veins. I don't know what they're called. The draft shutters. What are, you know the the dampers ampers none, none, of, none of my locomotives have those not of all locomotives have them, oh okay well do. you know we we could oh well yeah and then and then someone else could have like a secret fan compressor that puts more forced draft into their locomotive right all, all, all of the locomotives have those you i know could, you they have, have it at the stack but have could... another one underneath to like like big you <laughs> oh, know big radiator one. fans that suck in more air right see see we, we could do the ridiculous ones or we could like do the 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 modern day steam modern steam inventions of like the guy i don't remember his name um something porta i can never remember his last uh, his first name but uh he just like did steam late in argentina i want to say and came up with a lot of really unique and interesting developments like if steam stuck around that people would have used but it's like you could meme on that stuff like oh yeah this baby, it's got self-rocking grates. Yeah, it's tied into the valve gear. It makes the fire burn perfect. Like, 
Wait, what? It has what? That was a thing someone tried? Like, you can have I, a I lot of fun with that. I still understand the whole grates thing, because you have, like... You have grates in the firebox, right? Yeah. So you have on the grates, bottom of the firebox. Imagine your Weber kettle grill. You're 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 gonna go make a hamburger out on on your grill outside. Okay. I mean, I know I just said the most American thing thing in existence, but imagine that you have a Weber grate. grills. Yeah. No. You, okay. You but, have a grate but, that you cook food on, and then there's a grate right, that the coal sits like, on. Yeah. Well, you have the you have the grilling surface itself, that like the rail, like you know the right. metal grill. That you cook the food on and then below that there's like a catch like kind of like a ridged catch thing with holes in it to catch like stuff that falls right and then right? you have an ash pan below that right. right and so your grates are on the ash pan below that yeah i mean but how do you of, not like wouldn't the coal burn small enough and then eventually once the coal is small enough it would just fall through the holes right onto are the track? really small um but they do they do eventually burn and fall through into the ash pan but the ash pan's solid like it prevents and the it ash from pan's like out. curved up, so it allows air to flow in over the top of it, and then underneath, and then pull it yeah, through. Yeah, the, the sides are open, and then sometimes right. if it's equipped with dampers, then uh, the dampers will allow more air in from the front or the back or whatever, and then right. that's where you get all your stuff. And that's actually the ash pan's not. I mean, it's partially modeled on this engine. You can see the bottom of the pan and the hopper, but the gap. So you'd have you to still clean out the ash things. pan, but that's a manual job. Oh god, yeah, and that's that's actually the like that. Depending on the engine, it can be the worst job. Um, right. If if it's some engines are super easy, like three forty six and twenty, super easy. Four ninety one. So what happens if all your grates get plugged while you're driving? You're oh, that's just, a nightmare. I mean, you just you it doesn't want tend to anymore. happen. It doesn't tend to happen because I mean, it, the, it's really kind of a self fulfilling prophecy of the draft creates draft. Right, it's pulling it in, but it's not putting uh, it out. But yeah, I mean, you can have what's called a clinker buildup, which is basically when something wrong in the combustion of the coal, or maybe if someone went in there with the rake and stirred the coals too much and flipped them upside down, the ash turns into a kind of concrete, basically. And then, then you've got this giant bit of concrete that won't burn, and nothing that goes on top of it will burn, and you kind of have to bust it up with a big pokey stick. Uh, that's a nightmare. But... Uh, yeah, <laughs> dealing with any of that stuff is not too fun. But thankfully, if you got good quality coal and uh, and an experienced fireman, you don't tend to run into that problem. So, how many times do you guys have to clean your grate, your ash pans then? Uh, once every day. Start of the day when you. Oh, down. really? It's yeah. like it's a daily, a daily thing. You gotta clean dump out it the ash out. Pan. Yeah. Same with the smoke box too. You clean out the front of the smoke oh, box. Oh, smoke box. Like so, the British have to clean out their smoke boxes, and we have self-cleaning smoke boxes, which means it just yeets everything out the stack. What? <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we check the smoke box on the annual, and we'll shovel out some of the, the things that collect in there. But every chuff sends almost everything out the stack. Like, it does not Isn't get that much stuff built up in there. Smoke box to not send stuff out the stack, though? I thought the point of the smoke no. box was to, like, catch flammable things and, like, nope. prevent them from, you know, burning down. That's definitely through... a part of it. But, like, the purpose of the smoke box is to create the draft for the fire. That's the real right. purpose, and and everything is set up in the smoke box to make good draft for the fire, uh, using the steam pressure from the the boiler to yeah, push exactly. the draft. Like it, it you could just dump, the, and like this is one of the reasons when people talk about like, um, uh, why there were no steam engines that were a continuous cycle. Like why did they vent the steam to air? Why didn't they try a condenser or something? And it's like, well, a the size of condenser you would need. All the yeah. condenser, like the size of condenser you would need, would be ridiculous. A, but B, the other piece of it is, you can get so much more steam generation from the insane heat you can generate when you're using the exhaust to heat the fire, because it literally runs it through a special nozzle, the blast nozzle, which converts the steam exhaust into a normal shock wave that goes out the stack, and that is the chuff sound you hear, is a right. literal fluid mechanics normal shock wave going out yeah, the yeah, stack, and, it'll and that, be, it'll that be high, everything. Yeah. High, uh, it'll go from high pressure, um, high pressure, low, uh, low, low, um, velocity to low pressure, high velocity. Yeah, there we go. Yes. God, I, I, I know what you're, I saw yeah, the, the words pressure, in your head. Yeah, high pressure, low velocity, low pressure, high velocity. That's the, god dang, I don't know what I was, yeah, and then uh, because of the rapid expansion of the steam, it makes sense. Thermodynamics, you know, it's it's tough. I've been awake all day. Thermodynamics is just it's one eluding of those things, my brain. Right? That's interesting. So with steam engines, though, there's no other 
forced draft mechanism. It's only coming out the stack and there then creates big suction. Like, the... they don't put anything underneath it that forces air in. So there's the blower, and the blower is usually just a pipe that also dumps out the stack, and the steam flow out the, the pipe causes the same draft, but it's constant. And it's much less powerful because it's no longer a normal shockwave. It's literally just, imagine you've opened your sink and your sink is pulling more things down the drain, except it's now steam power that, it, that is going up out of the stack, causing that well, same Well, the, the easiest way to duplicate it would be when you have a straw. Um, and if you take a straw and cut a slice into it, and then you blow and you, like, bend it, right? So you take a straw and you cut a slice in it, you bend it, you put it into, like, a glass of water. And if you blow through the open tube, the suction of your air will pull the water up. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's the, that's the same principle, but like if you blow at a constant rate, you're only going to pull so much water. That makes right. total sense. Right. But there's, there's there's nothing on the firebox side, like no, no. blowers on the firebox no. side, nothing forcing no, it's air all from underneath. On, it's all downstream. It's all at the end. Yeah. Right. So it's the kind of thing, it's like an exponential curve. The more you build the fire, the more it goes, the more steam, the more it keeps going more and more and more and scaling the, up. Yeah. To... The harder the engine works, yes, the more fuel it burns, but also the hotter it burns, so the more steam it generates. So right. you really have to have that right balance, and the engine's got to be set up to burn right uh, and draft right for how hard it's designed to work. Because if you have a poorly designed front end in a locomotive in the smoke box, it won't draft hard enough and it won't generate enough steam. So if you look at the, the actual Tweetsy engine that we have, this 280, it's got a super long smoke box. It's like yeah, twice as long, long towards, the front. towards the front, like twice as long as most of the other ones in the game. And that was to help increase the draft because you could end up pulling more gas in with a bigger smoke box like that. Per, per chuff and everything like that. So uh, it was a, a design typically used for worse grades of coal. Like uh, commonly around Colorado, we had the Great Western Railroad, which is still around. They don't run steam anymore, but when they ran steam, they burned kind of junk coal. So all their steam engines got super long smoke boxes so that they could help burn that coal the best that they could. Hmm, that's interesting. I've got all these rails loaded, by the way. I don't know how you're at, but... Uh, I am on the bridge coming above you pretty shortly here. Oh, you're coming back now? Yeah, did you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're on your way back, is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. Bridge? Yeah, okay. That's good. I thought maybe you derailed again and you were just leaving on the bridge, you know, because that... Oh, no. No, I'm on my way back with eight loads. I was like, yeah. I'm loading ten per car. You're loading three per car. This should be, you know, this should be... Uh... It's actually good, though, so I can park this here you're gonna go right around which will be perfect and then i'm just gonna moonwalk right now slow these things down and park on the lead track the rails will end up being on the back of your train but whatever that's yeah, fine we can live Should with that be fine all right perfect maybe slow down please finish thank you awesome I'm excited to see how this shenanigan works on the 10%. Well, we I, don't have to go up 10%. Oh, wait, no, we do. We have yeah, to go to the coal we're mine. Going to the coal mine right. Oh, yeah, we do have to go up 10%. Yeah, I, I don't know. I have a distinct feeling that we're not going to be able to do it in in one go. but. Well, we'll try. Do, uh, do you have the tonnage math at all? Have you worked it out? Or I haven't. I can, if we would like. Or we could just leave yeah, it Yeah, I mean, chance. while we're driving over there, we might as well. We can set it at a low speed and... Sure, Beams are relatively light, which is good. The rail is yeah. not so much, but I'll start putting the math together once we once we get put together, and then uh, I'll let you run while I do the math. Because uh, I don't want to get accused of derailing while paying attention to Excel uh, on my way down to the smelter right now. Choo choo, whistle. One sounds. thing I was thinking about the other day, okay, which I don't know if this exists or not, right? But you know how boats have locks, right? To go up and down. Yeah, they cliffs. they pump water in and out and go up right. down levels. And the boat the goes up and down. And yeah. So, did anybody ever make like a train elevator? <laughs> um, for trains. For like is there an any like train? is there any instance of like a train elevator where a train drives onto a track and then gets lifted up somewhere? 
Like not a whole train, but just individual cars or locomotives. In is there any terms reason? of like a mining operation or a mining railroad or some small industrial railroad, I'm certain that has to exist. Like in someone terms... made a thing that just flat up lifts a car vertically up a mountain or whatever. Right. In terms of something that's like a full size train, um, or like a full lo size locomotive or full size train car or something, I'm kind of doubtful. There's probably one weird one off one that someone's gonna mention in the comments, which will be neat to yeah, learn about. Like, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not like a total moron. I don't think anybody would ever lift like a whole, you know, eight car long train or anything. Right. I was just thinking, like, you know, is there a place where you'd be like, hey, we need to get this one hopper car up to the top of the mine, so let's just lift it up an elevator, or like this lumber right. car up the mountain, you know, like it's. I'm sure that they had that in mining establishments. Various assorted mining establishments. No, Sam, mining no, establishment. Mining establishment. Mining, <laughs> mining consortiums, <laughs> you say. And uh, like, various other things. Someone like had that. to have thought it was more efficient than, you know, some crazy grade or something. Right. right? Like, would... Yeah. I'm sure that existed in industrial applications. But beyond that, I, I don't know. So I'm curious to see what uh, our experts in the comments may have because <laughs> half the time the stuff that comes out of the woodworks in the comments is like, well, that's really neat. So. Yeah. It's fun. Our smelter's now sadly empty. We have very little iron, oh, very man. little cordwood. Oh yeah, there's yeah. like hardly any loads left in there. Oh goodness. There's literally nothing left to. We're gonna to have pick to. Up. Populate and then on the top of that, our again. iron mine is like not full either. So we need to supply the we're, iron. We gotta mine. start back over at, at logs and just go through the yeah. chain again. Apparently. Oh no, the the sawmills like. Fine. The saw sawmill's still bumping. That's, that's sawmill's sure. still got logs, probably, even after you picked up all this stuff. Like, it's uh, it's a great industry. But yeah, the iron mine's gonna need some... It's gonna need some stuff. Uh, we're gonna need to bring iron down here and cordwood down here. And then, uh... You know, but at least, at least now our coal mine will be full, so we should have coal for days. Although, apparently, this, you know, this hopper coal the, tender... The tender is, is just, uh... Yeah, a ridiculous amount apparently. I, I think they yeah. said it's six thousand, and if it's six thousand kilograms, which Kume likes to program in metric because he's German and that like makes sense, um, that does make a vague amount of sense for the size of engine, right? I don't. That's I don't understand. That's like 13, the American opposition to the metric system. Okay, I really uh, we, don't. Uh, okay, I, last time I brought the don't. metric system up in a video, it got me like banned from I the United States. I don't get it. Okay, you so. guys are all for doing things simpler, right? How many ounces are in a pound? 16. Okay, right? And how many pounds are in uh, a ton? A thousand, right? Or two, some nonsense? 2,000, two bro. Oh, 2,000. Okay, right, right. That's why you have an imperial ton and a metric ton, right? Whereas, like, yes. ours are... So, like, it's like, you know, how many grams are in a kilogram? A thousand. Right. You know how many kilograms are in a ton? A thousand. Right. You know how many, you know, milligrams are in a gram? One one thousand, a thousand. You know, yeah. like the units are just—they're easy. They multiply, multiply by, 10. by ten centimeters yeah. to a meter. You know, a hundred centimeters to a decimeter, ten. You know, millimeters to a centimeter, ten. But you guys are all like, you know what? I want twelve inches to a foot, and uh, five thousand two hundred and eighty feet to a mile. There you go. Yeah, and then and then yeah, exactly. Like that makes sense. And then we're gonna use um. What? Then you're gonna have football yards. Like, what's a football yard? Three feet. Three Is feet. It, yeah three feet right so like who comes up with this nonsense i you know i would love to know the true history of all of those things um and a lot of it doesn't make sense for easy math um i i do understand that arguments like people were talking about temperature recently and and it, that was where it last came up i mean i'm all for me team from america i'm but... sorry team kelvin for life like let's be oh, real the scientist let's just calm you know. the scientist is here yeah, people argue that the Imperial stuff is how you feel versus metric is how water feels. And it's like, well, what, how, what does that mean? Like, okay. it's 80 outside. I feel 80% okay. It's 100. I'm 100% burning to death. Like, well, it's, I, I mean, that's like 100 is pretty hot. It's, and, yeah. And zero is pretty cold versus you know what's zero nice about is, the metric is system, a though? little cold. This is me advocating metric again, okay? Water dead. freezes at zero and it boils at 100. Yeah, but I don't care about water. I care about me because I'm selfish. No, you care about Coca-Cola and, and Mountain Dew. Well, hey, man, I have a Coke Zero addiction. Don't you call me out like that. <laughs> I was just... Uh, yeah, yeah. I care about the... Uh, what is it? The the, the big gulp at 7-Eleven? That's what I'm going <laughs> the big, for. You know what I mean? the big gulps, man. Yeah, the All big right, gulp. All right, well, uh, yeah. I'm going to let you run to... Oh, that's great. Least, yeah, you're going to do math. At least to the helper station, and I'm, I'm going to do some maths here. 
I just, I don't understand it. All my American friends, man, always the same thing. They're always like, oh, Imperial is better. But I'm just like, guys, the metric stuff's just so much easier to understand. I you prefer know? doing math in metric. Um, I really do. Because as soon as you start talking about units of mass, and it's like, what the hell is a slug? That's oh that's Imperial God. mass. Um, is, and and, what and, is it? and um, it's so stupid. Foot pounds. Foot pounds. What Please talk, talk about foot pounds. Foot pounds. Foot pounds is terrible. What's wrong with I'm foot pounds? That's torque, baby. Newton meters is so much better, dude. I don't know what you're. Well, the, what? How much? How much is a Newton? A Newton, a Newton is is, it, is an apple more. bonking you on the head. That's very helpful. No, well, it's it's one kilogram of mass dropping from one meter, isn't it? That's a Newton. I, I'm pretty sure that's right. Like one kilogram yeah. meters per second squared, right? That's a Newton. So yeah, one yeah. kilogram meter per second squared. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, but pounds because I can measure beef in pounds. I don't measure beef in newtons. You don't measure beef. How many newtons of beef do I have? How 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 American you don't ask was that the sentence to just beef. then? <laughs> You're asking for kilos of meat, of beef. Well, but but that's not weight, Con. Okay? Actually, when I buy when I buy meat in Canada, it's priced per hundred grams is how they price oh, it. Oh, interesting. That, Which that's, is yeah, so that's, that's kind that's of bizarre. How is that bizarre? That's, so, you that's, buy it that's per not grams. that's not what I'm used to. Therefore, it's weird, Con. Don't right, you get yeah, how this no. works? Oh, man, I feel I like me the... and me and ninety percent of the rest of the world agree that the metric system is better, and then there's the ten well, percent. Cheeseburgers for all... freedom, bro. Get out. Pro imperial. <laughs> uh, I always hated it in university because in university they were like they would just interchange them freely, right? And you had to have all these conversion tables, and it right. was just. I mean, same for us. Like, they taught us the same thing in engineering over like here. Here's an extra step for no reason, just because, right? It's like what's okay. So what's Fahrenheit for water? Freezes at 34, 32, right? bro. Come on. Oh, 32. Have you ever okay, what is it? Before? So it's it's like what? Nine over five plus 32 is the math, or five Correct. over nine? Yeah, five over nine or nine over five yeah, plus 32. Yeah, because like, yeah. guys, we love fractions. Let's be American. Who? Well, twenty five point four millimeters for an inch, by the way. I remember well, that forever. I, dude, so when I did the boiler survey on the four ninety one, our um, our UT tester, ultrasonic thickness tester, measured Is in millimeters. millimeters. So I had to convert. I had to divide by twenty five point four, uh, and it yeah. was just it was just the the worst. Yeah. Although it's funny, I build a lot of like I've been building uh, a lot of my RC track stuff. Right. And I I do all that in inches and fractions. Well, look at you talking smack about uh, uh, our freedoms <laughs> over here. It's only because my tape measure only has inches for some reason. I bought a tape measure in Canada How only inches. you buy a tape measure that's only imperial I don't know. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't have, yeah, it doesn't have Bruh. metrics on it at all. It's just imperial. So I don't I don't know how that happened. But That that's, is kind of hilarious. Yeah. Oh, Colin, this is. train's not buffing out. This train is so not buffing out. I'm telling you right now. What do you mean? This uh, the getting up the ten percent with this? Oh, what's the what's the math? Yeah, how are we? Okay, so we're we're gonna have three hundred forty five thousand pounds, okay. and together we have one hundred forty thousand pounds up the ten percent with the two eight zero and the climax. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, because the two eight zero. I mean, the the tender engines are really bad on the ten percent, and I'm assuming that the tender weight on this engine is the same as the class 70, and it's actually probably heavier. Well, we'll take so, a run at it, and then if we don't make it, we'll tie some cars, and... Yeah, the nice thing is that we will probably make it up the 6.5%. Actually, no, we're gonna be at right at 300,000, so the 6.5, we might not even make it up the 6.5. I'll so try it. We'll try it, we might. There's a flat, spot, the the There's a flat right? spot, and we hit it with speed. Speed yeah. and power, we, we might actually do quite well, but you know. Yeah, well, and, we're just oh, gonna uh, into and the just to finish the uh, the the uh, metric conversation, because uh -huh. the rest of my comments are gonna say this something something. Uh, did you put a man on the moon with your metric measurements? Something something. Did you make Britain win the yeah, world they wars did, with actually. your imperial measurements? They did, and then they converted it metrics. to actually for the history buffs out there. I remember reading that. They actually did it in metric and then did the conversions. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, I mean that that tracks because the math's easier. So yeah. yeah, and then and then by the way, the standard the U. So you know how there's um in in the world there's like a kilogram standard, right? A standard mass of a kilogram is an actual weight. That's an actual physical that. thing that exists. It's yes. a physical object, which is kind of there's a whole history behind that. Really exciting stuff. If you want to go look into it, but you know the the uh, American standard. Whoops, God, that was a Don't. aggressive bounce. It's fine. The American standard for a pound 
is uh, just fractions of that kilogram weight. It's not. That is actually, hilarious. You gotta, you gotta actually back up a little bit because it's uh, or just break for a sec. We're double double latched here. All right, now you can go forward. Anyway, I don't I don't really care one way or the other. I just find it funny that you guys are all for simplicity. And then every American I know is like, simplicity, but let's have a really wonky measuring system. I really do. For me, like, I am so used to how our measurements work and like an inch makes so much, like, like I know what an inch looks like. I know what all of the American standard hardware, well, like I can call it. You know what an inch looks like. Well, God, wow, 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 wow. Anyways. Um, there's a lot of inch hardware on the train. Thanks, so Silas. Uh, inside okay. my wood, by the way, just to FYI, we're. Uh, it's oh wood. god, what what, what in the name well. of coupling is going on right there? <laughs> it's, it's, um, uh, oh yeah, we are we are having some pilot docking at the moment. That's fine. Yeah, this this is this is That's, interesting. Uh, it's fine. It's um, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, if I'm going in yeah. reverse, would my stand even work, or would it come out the wrong side? Uh, I don't know if the Climax has reverse sanders or not. And actually, the Climax, the sanders are shown as dropping on top of the drivers, so they don't really, like, do anything anyways. Um, right. Because reasons. Um, so, I mean, uh, there, there may be. I mean, if it's dropping on the drivers, they would do something, technically. But, yeah, a lot of engines don't really actually have backup sand. We don't really seem like we're gaining any this, speed here. This engine... The Tweetsie 280 has backup sand, has two sand lines on the one, the number one. And then what, they have a valve to switch between them? That's weird. It's it's actually only got the manual sand lever, but like normally the valve would be wow, able to Wow, we did not make it very far. Were you, were you applying any tractive effort? Like we immediately oh, died. Oh, 100%, bro. 100%. Okay. Well, that didn't buff. Well, that was, that was a riveting adventure. Um, okay. So, uh, you know, we could... We could break the train up, or we could go get the class 48 and shove. Is the class 48 going to be enough? Class 48 would add another 51,000 pounds on the 10%, and another 94,000 pounds on the 6.5. It's actually almost as good as as the Tweetsie engine on the 6.5%. And it's better so than it, it at the it wouldn't 10%. wouldn't really... We wouldn't really, we wouldn't really. Um, we would be able to double the train instead of triple it on the 10%, and we'd be able to pull it up this in one go on the six right. and a half. But we'd somehow have to cut the class 48 into the front when. Uh, uh, well, yeah, we didn't put a passing track at the top, did you? No. We can cut it at the iron we'd mine. We'd have to pass can, at the iron mine. Yeah, we can, we can do that. It's not the end of the world. Somehow. Uh, okay. I guess I'll go get class 48. All right. So, uh, might as on. well. Might as well see how this goes. I'm not very optimistic anymore, Heist. Well, uh, I'm really it's, not. Uh, that's fine. We'll the switchback is honestly my favorite piece of track now because it's just so clean and easy. Um, on those messages, uh, we'll we'll be right back when uh, Khan gets up here to the class 48. All right. So um, I I hear legend that you're over there with the class 48 um i can't see yeah you. i have i have half boiler pressure but we'll get there uh, it's uh, it's fine uh actually come to think of it i've actually run out of fuel so let me shovel some more in you know they, they did say in the update that the coal was gonna last longer than the wood but the coal actually seems to burn faster there's just more of it in the tender so i think i think yeah last longer is just the sheer quantity of tender <laughs> about i still yeah. haven't seen the tender go down at all yeah because uh yeah it's uh it's a whole thing but it's fine Anyway, right. uh, so I'm gonna let's do the thing. Class 48's on 100%. I can actually just walk up with leaving that at 100%. Yeah, I've got. It'll never get spicy hundo. speed. It's and also not even. It's not even pinned in. It's just pushing. Oh, is the climax nice. just slipping to death? Is that what's going on there? Probably. I'm coming up. The climax kind of requires a little bit more micromanagement yeah, to run. Yeah, I actually I jumped into the climax so that I could run it for sure. Oh, okay, gotcha. And it's hard to tell yeah. if it if, is it. I guess it just spins that fast, but it's still putting down tractive effort. Right? So I got sand on, and I'm gonna give it 95% reg. That sounds. Oh, fun. bells, bells, bells. Your yep. Bells, get the bells going. <laughs> I didn't put the cli the class 48 spell on, but it's fine. Does it have boiler pressure back there? I still don't see. Yeah, it. yeah, 160. 
Class 48 at the very back? I, I think it does. I just what? think we're too heavy. Why does you know this what I think this, cal work? this calls for? What? We have options here, Heist. This is the debate now, right? Right. This is real railroad scheduling, okay? So, we are here. We need to go over that. Obviously, this is not going to work, right? right. Unless we double this and possibly triple the 10. So, right. Right. is it faster to do all that with all that cutting? Or is it faster to just push G back? Give up and go all the way around go the other all way? all the way around. <laughs> Uh, I gotta say, Khan, I'm not a huge fan of that idea. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of going around either, but I feel like with some magical editing cuts, we could just be on the, the, we could just be on the, um, the switchback, like, you know, now. You just, you just like your switchbacks. You just, I, you know, I just don't, I really just don't like cutting the train. It's really what that comes down to. Uh, uh, fine. Okay. See you on the other side, people. Easy, man. Easy edits. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, you're gonna snap my fingers. We're gonna be on the switchback. You ready? You ready? Look at that! Boom! That was, that was Whoa. so fast. Whoa! We definitely wow. did not. Uh, yeah, no, we're here. Look, it was instantaneous. That was great, actually. I got to eat my dinner while <laughs> while that was happening while we were driving here. Just uh, enjoy, enjoying the railroad, enjoying the I scenery. Enjoyed the railroad. Yeah. Did That's, you see like... any pine trees on the way? Pine trees? Pine trees, yeah. Like what in the scenery that you were looking at while you were eating your dinner on the way? Oh no, these are all cedars, aren't they? They look kind of like cedars are pine trees, bro. Are cedars are aren't, considered aren't pine? They? Really? Aren't they? I, I don't, don't know, know actually. I'm I'm not a very I know good tree like, person. They're, a, they're an evergreen or, or what is they it? They are a coniferous tree, an evergreen tree. Yeah. Conifer. But isn't a cedar? I, I don't know. I <laughs> I I'm here. This is a belief I've held since I was a child. And I'm about to get it rocked by somebody in the comments, I'm sure. So What, that cedars are pine trees? Yeah. I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. These look like cedars, though, don't they? They don't uh, look like pine. They, they Maybe look they're like, pines. They, they could be a fir tree. Oh, wait, what would happen on the railroad if you had to go for, like, eight hours and, you know, you had an eight-hour trip? You just, you know, you got to obviously go to the bathroom off the train and then just... Right. Well, I mean, or um, off the side, but, you know. That's what I mean, like, off the side and then bring a pale lunch, like... Yeah, bring bring a lunch, and a lot of times, I mean, depending on the service, you would stop and eat at a at a town along the way at a division point or something. There's a lot so of me eating stir fry while you were driving train is not not unrealistic. I just not have unrealistic. Someone up I mean, to stir fry uh, and hand it to me in the cab and right. There's actually videos of dudes um, in modern trains in like diesels and stuff pulling up and stopping at a grade crossing at a Wendy's and getting like fast food handed up to them and then they take off again and Are it's just like, yeah, there's definitely a video of that existing. It's like, you're stuck at the crossing. Why is the train stop? Oh, engineering wants a burger. Guy wants Wendy's. <laughs> so, hey, I mean, I get it. I get it, man. I'm there. I get it. Could you order like, imagine ordering delivery to a train? Just be like, yeah. hi, I'm going to be rolling into your town in the next 20 minutes. Can you please, you know, have a pizza ready and we'll just we'll just pick that up that's a vibe man i feel and like someone's done that at some I'm point i'm certain you know? that they have and at like at the end of the day the way to a railroader's heart is through their stomach like right railroaders love food dude like so that just, that was you know, the the instant way to get the, sh the guys on shop shifts to like me and respect me was buy them pizza out of my own pocket like get nice pizza yeah, take care of the guys like the, i think that's just like the way to that's just the way and i'm not sort of i'm not talking heart. like management pizza party uh paid for the company like i literally bought 200 dollars worth of pizza a couple different times like just all, off, out of the blue like had it delivered for lunch it was like yeah no this is on me like you guys have been kicking butt like uh, this is all i can do anything like i would give some of you raises but you know unions and politics and things i can't do that but i can give you pizza and it's a gesture for me not from the company as like a yay this is your pizza party like so. in modern day railroads i guess everyone they just use cell phones right and like if they're in a super remote area they'd use a satellite phone or something like is that i suppose they, i mean i mean you, they even the, with the that? locomotives have radios and they talk via radio is um, it am radio like I it's it's its own band of radio like there's a whole oh, chapter of the FCC stuff that is railroad radio and it's its own frequency band and stuff and it, they're very specific um, interesting but they they have some pretty ridiculous lengths and the the base units on the locomotives are pretty powerful because do they, they talk have to like talk pretty do far on the radios like you know this <laughs> is Frickin big Frickin papa rolling through the grade crossing <laughs> hey this hey, is big so papa, this little ducky 
<laughs> I'm gonna, we're, we're gonna drop her off at the choke and puke. Yeah. Um, no, no, they don't. They really don't. <laughs> there's, there's more That's rules. More, more rules against it being, you know, more closely monitored by things and like to the point of uh, even our rare, our rare pff, radios. I don't think they're actually on the railroad bands, but they're monitored by the FCC and like swearing over the radio is n- not kosher, not cool. Like, oh, interesting. to the point of somebody sweared over the radio and like everyone was like, what did you just do? You can't do that. You can't swear on the radio. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> one of those funny, silly little things. All right, we're good. All right, backing up and I gotta toss. Have I ever told you how much I love switchbacks? Uh, a couple times. I think you're crazy, and uh, you know we would have had the train unloaded by now had we just doubled and tripled the hill. But... So, you know, I know how everyone tells us to get like a Betsy and then a Betsy like Porter two and make them into a Fairly, right, and put them back to back. Like they want to a... watch me cry. Yeah. Yeah. Is there an actual locomotive that has two separate boilers with two separate fireboxes running one, like running two separate drive gear, but it's all attached together? That's not That's... just linked. That's pretty much what the Fairly is. The double Fairly. It's actually like two fireboxes, two boilers, so, two so it's, regulators. Well, so the Fairly is one boiler, two fireboxes, two engines, two regulators. So the fireboxes are share distinct, a boiler. but they share a boiler. Because when you're working one end versus the other, you don't want to draft cold air through the fire you're not tending. So the fireboxes are separate, but the boiler is the same. There are some engines that were designed to be nested pairs, though, where it's like a hinge pin, two sets of engines. Like there were some French engines in World War I that were actually trench railroad locomotives. If you didn't know, there were trench railways that had steam engines that served in World War I, and that is a whole deep dive they, of they dug, crazy stuff. They dug stuff. a trench wide enough for a whole train. And yeah, they, they, they a... were usually like two foot or 30 inch gauge. They were small trains, but they were trains, so even smaller than these. And the and trench would be deep enough where you wouldn't see the train like chugging I, by? I assume so. I don't know. Like, that was the logistics though, to supply a lot of the front lines or close oh to the God. base camps, close to the, at the front line, I would assume. Um, and, and they had all sorts of cute, weird, wacky locomotives and the French had like uh, a pair of 060s that were hinged together that had nested cab roofs where one cab roof was taller than the other so it would go cab roof over cab roof but then they could split them apart and use them as one uh, individually if they needed the, to the fuel though for that because like, it's you in the cab a... like it's betsy or out on the running like on either side too. of the yeah. cab or whatever yeah <clears throat> There's a weird Count engine. On the French to make that kind of stuff. Well, it's true. There's a weird engine that served the McLeod River Railroad in Oregon that had a pretty similar setup where it was two engines kind of put together. And one of them had a uh, water tank off to one side. And then the other one had like the, the fuel off on the running board ahead of the cab door. Like it was a saddle tank, but it was for the coal or wood or whatever. And they're like really bizarre. There's a lot of neat prototypes that actually did that. They're all kind of weird and cursed, but they're really neat. Something about any offset team locomotive just feels wrong. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, I like symmetry. I get it. Symmetry's nice. But, well, it's not even, it's just for weight. Like, you don't want more weight on one side of the locomotive compared to the other, because then you'll turn really well. It's like, if you look at NASCAR cars, the chassis they are, are actually, designed like, that way, yeah. They're designed to go in one direction. They, they literally struggle going the opposite direction. And when they do the stock car racing in NASCAR, don't they modify it or something? I don't know. There's going to be some NASCAR expert that's going to know. But, like, because they do do some courses that have right turns, you know? Right. Yeah, and so they must do something because different, like the whole car is... from what I recall because um, <laughs> one of my favorite profs in college actually used to design NASCAR chassis so right. fun stuff but yeah they, they literally put more of the weight on the inside of the turn to make it automatically want to turn that way but if you're doing yeah. a road course instead of the, the oval you know you want a different setup so I'm, I'm sure that they had a way to adjust it or they had a completely different chassis I would not be surprised if that was the case yeah gotta love that so anyway, we're going to make a train line where all the train weight is on the inside, on the one end. We're going to run Shays. There you go. The yeah. Well, though, with Shays, it's easy, right? All you got to do is have two Shays and put them on opposite sides. So and one faces forward. Then it's rotationally back. symmetric. Yeah. Right. And then they counteract each other, right? No problem. Right. But, but I mean, at the end of the day, steam engines, are, they're, they're close to symmetrical, <laughs> but they're not with like the way the rods are set up. Um, and then, of course, the air compressor usually on one side until you get to big engines. 
sometimes they have uh, <laughs> symmetrical air compressors. Sometimes they still have both of them on one side. And uh, all right, also it's a weird thing. This like is that. an interesting thought. Multiple tracks side by side, running parallel, pulling one train. Other than the German's giant holy monster cannon. <laughs> I'm surprised he knows of Schwer Gustav, viewers. I know of the giant German rail cannon that had the two parallel lines. They ran the parallel lines up the northern coast of ja. Europe. And they had multiple. We want to shoot half meter projectile at the English. Yeah, we want <laughs> across ja. like any distance. But anyway, so other we than that. We want to shoot the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Other, other than that, is there any other instances of that? Do you know of, of two parallel tracks pulling one engine? Like pulling... None that I know of. Um, there were some pretty wide gauges back in the day that like would be considered like that, like Brunel gauge that was like seven foot or something. And then somebody tried, I might have been the Germans again, tried like a nine foot gauge and stuff. So like, of course it was the Germans. Why wouldn't I, it be there's the stuff uh, like that vaguely scratches that itch, but I don't know if there was any like real legit we got two engines on two different tracks pulling one train kind of thing i still i still love the meme where it's like um there was a, the, someone had put a sign in a walmart that said it was banning sales of like 350 millimeter ammo or 334 millimeter ammo or whatever okay um because like i don't know whatever but they meant to do like three point point three three four or whatever but they forgot the decimal and then someone puts the german hand in it goes yes it's my 334 millimeter <laughs> yeah right yes <laughs> like, yeah you, you missed uh you yeah. missed a couple significant figures there friend yeah, yeah. Like, orders of magnitude it's fine that was such a that's such a cra such a crazy thing if to think about in world war ii they're like what if we put a giant cannon on two parallel rails and just train it along the front line sometimes you know? you're playing factorio and you need to shell the bugs man <laughs> yeah sometimes <laughs> apparently the artilla train yeah it's nuts like it's the logistics of that it's yeah just it's just insane it's impressive piece of machinery i don't really know like i don't know the history of that i don't know if they actually used it or i or... have no I have yeah. no idea i also i've just seen all the pictures of it and been like wow you guys are nuts like this is just I also have questions about when it aims and fires. I'm sure there's people in the comments who know, but like you would think that if it's rotated, like it would only be able to aim down the track. <laughs> Derails right? itself otherwise. Like wouldn't the it? The recoil's yeah, got to be immense. Rail the thing with the recoil. There's no way. Well, I guess like, at, at the same time, it's such a large thing. Like maybe it just absorbed the recoil like a champ. Because if you fire, I, I mean, I'm sure you're scared of firearms because you're Canadian, probably. No, um, I've shot many a gun. Oh, okay. Calm down. Okay, okay. I, I, right, I, right, I, right. I, you know, I've bruised um, my shoulder on many a shotguns. It's fine. Right. Don't worry about so, it. So, um, I had a, I've got a buddy who's got uh, one of the little itty bitty Smith and Wesson revolvers that right. weighs eleven ounces. I'm sorry, that's some amount of grams, about half a pound. Um, yeah. Fully loaded with 357 Magnum rounds, um, and that is like having a midget hit you in the knuckles with a brass hammer every time you pull the trigger, that is the most awful recoil sensation of any firearm I've ever experienced. Um, and then a 44 Magnum revolver, big eight inch barrel, 44 Magnum, heavy, big revolver uh, with a, a much easier trigger pull when you're in single action, but you pull the trigger on that and it just like, it yeah. just rolls. It doesn't punch you. It's very slow, despite it being a bigger, more powerful cartridge. So, like, maybe the Gustav with a gigantic, ridiculous bore, giant projectile that was designed for, I don't know, smoting Godzilla. Uh, you know, <laughs> maybe something well, like I, that is, is like, it, I, the I, weight I, of the train yeah. just absorbs it. I don't know. I feel like they, they must have only aimed it in the direction of track, plus or minus, like, maybe... 15 20 degrees right like that would be yeah. my guess what, what if you laid your track wrong dang it just re <laughs> relay the track it would be easier to relay the track than tip the thing up from being in the dirt right well yeah that's yeah that's yeah that's lay some temporary track swivel the thing over on your temporary track fire it remove your temporary track i mean that seems like a lot of work but they also built a giant freaking moon cannon so well you know it's uh it's fine it's ridiculous <laughs> yeah who makes the train go on two tracks? Who put a giant gun yeah. on it? Yeah. <laughs> the, the engineers of that design meeting were like, okay, okay, hear me out, right? We need a really big gun. Okay, sure. We'll put it on our nine-foot gauge. 
And then there's like, it's that meme of that one guy in the back corner of the room that just looks all like, you know, freaking out. And he's like, what if we put it on two tracks? Mm. Then they throw him out the window of the skyscraper. Then they throw him out the window. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> well, man, I'm just realizing that we're, we're basically getting another grand circle tour of our railroad again. Although, yeah, uh, pretty much. We, uh, we, we space bar, space bar, space bar, tab, 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 tab. Uh, control entered uh, most of it for you folks because uh, the good thing is know, continuity though like continuity wise um, you know we're right back where we started the whole point of this was to bring the empties away from the coal mine but now we're now we've brought them back again and then we'll, we brought them we'll, back we'll again. still have to bring the empties somewhere again yeah that's fine we'll figure it out we'll build a, a coal tipple back at spawn or not spawn but at the hump yard and then Go, uh, go bring coal to it, and then that'll be great. Yeah, exactly. But we'll have to bring the hoppers up for that. Right. So I guess we'll have to run. We we'll have, have to, to deadhead this these. The uh, this uh, we'll just run. You know, the deadhead train of no, uh, no cargo, and uh, bring that back down, and then swap over to the hoppers and head back up. We can honestly just bring the hoppers up and then bring all this down at one. I mean, the empty. Oh, is okay. Not gonna... If we want to have a big spicy train, oh, yeah, I guess we could use another locomotive and just leave the Tweetsie up here. Yeah. Save us a trip. Well, we need another pusher back up here anyway because we brought the climax back to the helper station. <laughs> that is true. Forty eights at the smelter. We need more engines. <laughs> we need another engine up here, so we should but, put a, a pusher up here anyway. I don't know what pusher to use. We don't really we, have much for we, it. We spent all of our money on on this big choo choo. I mean, I like it. Actually, because... I have thirteen hundred dollars now, so we're well, getting that's, there. That does not a locomotive make, Con. Well, it almost makes a shay, right? <laughs> that's not a locomotive. That is sadness. <laughs> That's a garage experiment gone wrong. <laughs> the ten mile is uh Mason Bogey. That's a that's a that's an interesting thing. Those are so It's cool. got a lot of tractive effort considering. They they're really neat. They're a really neat design and they were quite successful locomotives. The railroads really like them. There's actually a ton of letters from like the South Park Railroad and everyone who ran them saying that they were some of the finest locomotives they ever had, which is kinda interesting because Mason Machine Works that made the Mason bogies actually was not really a locomotive builder. They primarily made oh, machines really? and you things know, it's, for, it's for interesting textiles. when I go through this yeah. list of locomotives. If you were to ask me, if you were to tell give me this this whole picture of all these locomotives in this game and said, Alright, based on all these locomotives, which do you think was not the locomotive builder? It would be the bogey, yeah. 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 It would yeah. be like, I don't know, maybe it's the guy who thought that the bogey should be articulated compared to everything else. Well, I don't it, know, maybe... when it was great for super sharp curves. Like, it actually worked out. And the railroads really liked him. They just got, you know, small and low tractive effort pretty quickly compared to the new stuff that they got as the railroads were progressing. And they had a decently long career on the dsp and and... And they were done by like 1900 or whatever, but you know they were still good engines while they had them. And you got to remember how long those were good engines and, and how long they were around and what they did. So they're actually really I like neat the wear pieces of rolling stock. The articulating parts though would just be really high. Well, the articulated locomotives became like the big standard for big power. So I mean, it's it's not unreasonable to assume that they would have, you know, been serviceable and, and all that good stuff. So. All right, I can't unload all of these because reasons yeah we're gonna have to do the back and forth thing right we have eight so. so you could you're getting 24 beams and we no, have like okay, yeah. another 15 right. i can do two more cars and then i gotta wait Try and keep it's it good though fast i don't know why there isn't pace. more storage here i mean there's clearly more space for us to right just throw more beams you know all right you gotta go all the way forward now and you probably want to switch that switch in front of you to not go into the y <laughs> I'm already not going into the way. Oh, okay, never mind. I'm, uh, yeah, you're right. My bad. All right, you can slow down a lot because these are tens. I, don't no, know I can't see what load is where, so. All right, you're good. That's a, You can go faster than that a little bit. Unloading some rails. Should be able to unload all the rails because it'll consume it'll beams. consume the beams before yeah I believe yeah and there's 60 rails total that we can store here so it'll consume at least 10 rails before we all right you got two more cars to go okay oh two three cars. more my bad i can see three that one cars, two cars three cars three quarter cars. mile quarter mile quarter mile Forty-seven thousand three hundred eighty-two inches uh yep there you go I've, I've told you the story about quarter mile right what Oh, that, 
uh, so race okay. to train a quarter mile? No, so my the first time I got to run on a real railroad, I got to run at the Coombrace and Toltec with our engine number 20. And I was so like concerned and like a little anxious. I wanted to make sure I was a good engineer, really smooth. Like this is my first shot. Don't screw it up. You know, impress the people All right, rather stop than there for a be bad. We gotta stop wait there. until the mine consumes some stuff. Okay, and then we'll go. Yeah. yeah. So I, I climb in the engineer's seat, and we were gonna move up, move the train out, let the photographers <laughs> off so they could get a photo run by on this charter that we were running. And I got told like, okay, it's gonna be like train length, okay. And I start getting car count to the stop. It's like four cars, okay, three cars, two cars. And I got a bunch of air set up, slowly, gently, nicely working the train to a stop. And it goes three cars, two cars, one car, half car, quarter mile. Oh my <laughs> at the, God. At the last second, the photographer who was like picking locations saw a place he liked better up ahead, told the conductor like, no, let, let's go up there. And so the conductor just went quarter mile. And it was just like, I had been so happy. I was like, I'm, I'm stretching the train. So nice then I put easy. it in notch eight and derailed. Dude, <laughs> dude, I kicked the air off and grabbed the throttle. I was like, we got a quarter mile to go, baby. <laughs> yeah. All funny. right, uh, you can back up your MD here. That was, uh, that was a dream. That was a dream come true, really getting out there and actually Good news. going to do the I'm thing. I'm up to $3,400. The rails, uh, the rails? Make cool. That's a, they make rails some money, are... man rails are worth something we also have 290 coal uh it's yeah it's this we've, is great we've fixed our coal problem got it yeah we're we're not gonna have a coal problem anymore which is nice which is good it's kind of one of those uh, things yeah. where i don't want to deplete the coal ever like even if we're supplying the ironworks we always want to have some left coal left over here in case we need to fuel an engine right like right. that's gonna be some time before the heat death of the universe yeah yeah so we're always gonna want to have a minimum amount of coal just to uh just to keep that fresh it's good though this is good we can actually you know we could buy another coal engine next episode and have a coal engine be the helper at the coal mine the but, the... but then but then the 21's not the kenosha bro oh that's right our next one's the 21 i mean, I mean we, we don't have to do that we, we don't have to do that but it would but be funny need... You wanted, but then you wanted to buy another road engine. You wanted the class seventy to be the twenty-one. Right, that would be like the most funny meme. But like, we don't have to do that because we did right. buy a big two eight zero. It's like we could do something else. It could still be but, in the Kenosha and still could, be funny. But we could skip a number, okay, and go to oh, and, and then come back and then go go to the what would be the thirty-four. The thirty-four. Oh God. Right. It's, what's so what's the name the on the engine? The rule, rule thirty-four. There you go. What, and that's what, as far as that conversation goes. Anyway, right. uh, <laughs> <clears throat> wow, we're already out of beams. Look at the, look at the rail supply, though, dude. dude. Look at this. We've got what, we've got one. We have an beam. We have fifty-two rails up here, man. We could bring just a whole train just of beams. All of the beams. And just that's amazing. Three hundred forty coal. That's sweet. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. Hold on. So I have uh, three thousand six hundred dollars. So we could go straight to the 34. Um, and if we went to the 34, we could buy for $3,400. We could buy a, a dollars. Dollar, that was weird. Anyway, dollars. we could buy a 10 mile. A 10 mile is $3,400. The bogey. The bogey I, I'm for that. The bogey's cool. Bogey's it's It's uh, cool. 8,400 pounds of tractive effort. It's uh, compared it's... to the class 48 is 9,300 pounds. So it wouldn't be the greatest pusher to help us at the coal mine, but it would be something. It's cool. It's pretty. It's neat. Yeah. Also, there's the Ruby Basin. Oh, God. It's only 4,600 for the Ruby Basin. That's probably got more power. A lot more. 13,000. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That's, the that, Heisler that in comparison the has... The Heisler has less than the Ruby Basin. Wow. Really? Okay. The Ruby Basin is 13,500. The Heisler is 13 flat. Oh, wow. It's the Ruby Basin. That's actually a pretty solid choo-choo. Okay, we need it's, to make a little bit more It's got more some money. paint schemes from uh, from around the world from similar locomotives, which is... Uh, oh a, my a god, choice. the lime green! What is this? Is this it's, Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends? What? Uh, it's apparently an Australian scheme. I mean, it's not accurate to the real Ruby Basin, but like, okay, maybe it'd get an we're, uh, feel, we're, I we're, guess. We're by, that's the color we're going with. I'm okay, sorry, Con. Uh, uh, 
cool. There's not there's not a <laughs> lot of things I push for, but we're getting, we're getting that color. We're getting like, we're getting the lime green choo choo because we want yeah, to watch me it, die it, inside. I tried. It can live I the, tried it so like hard. I tried so hard to not be mad at all last episode after my original live stream. Where Dude, I was it looks very sick. Frustrated. It's got black rims. It's got like lime green, white detailing. The red it literally looks like it belongs in a cartoon. This is amazing. As long as we name it Percy and I die yeah, that's on fine. the inside. Okay, that's fine. We cool. can name it Percy. It could be number Vote three. Vote now what on number, your wait, phones. What number is Percy actually, though? Uh, okay. I'm scratching the inside of my brain for long lost Percy. brain cells. Here we go. Let me look up. Uh, is the, it the number fit. six? It's number six. Hey, Lost I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, that's a brain cell from dude. Like this looks this looks crap. Plus years yeah. ago. We're gonna, I, it'll be number 34. We don't have a choice. We have to keep with the... As long as we put a Kongen stack on it to just be as cursed as possible. What is... What, what stack the, the, is that? The big, the big honkin' chonkin' stack. Oh! The, the mega chonker. And, and then a big box headlight with antlers. And with the same antlers oh on both ends. God. Why do they have antlers? Oh I mean, that's, that, that's actually a thing that they did. But, uh, you know, I mean... I don't oh, know, like that's yes. A, this is... This what we're buying we need forty seven hundred dollars i'm not i'm not need. sure why the, the antlers i'm not sure why yeah. the antlers are throwing up the wu-tang clan symbol but you know it's you um, know it's it, that's what we're buying we're, uh, we're gonna get that engine next okay, episode okay so yeah. next it's episode a heist dies look forward to yeah. tuesday everybody it's gonna yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be great i'll grind out some money just doing some basic logs or something and uh you know i just need a thousand bucks and then uh yeah we'll uh we'll buy that we'll bring some stuff up to the, the coal mine here get some coal deliver it do some coal stuff i don't know Whoa. anyway like subscribe we'll see you all next time are you dead already did you already die uh, it seems like you already v died. viewers viewers on mine will see what i've written on the side of the locomotive and uh <laughs> And uh, uh, yeah, those are opinions. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for watching, everybody. <laughs> we're going with it. See you next oh, time. Oh, God. My mouth tastes like a fire giant farted in it, you know? Yeah, I've, I've been there. I've been there. <laughs>